Uh, I just want to give a round of applause to our fellow Taylor. We have Carol with you. Uh, I'm Ronaldo Green. I'm here to moderate this uh, very open conversation uh, about a beautiful film that we just saw. Uh, we're here with his DP, right? Eric, Eric and his producer. Uh, a brief freestyle, but we'll come back to the cinematography because obviously it's such a, such a pure relationship between the director and, and, and Paul Work. Um, and his producer, Lizzie, right? Uh, Lizzie, so, as filmmakers, we know how difficult it is to make movies, so uh, I'm sure he probably feels that he wouldn't be here if we're not for her sitting right here. So, uh, I just want to talk about, I mean, first of all, Soria, phenomenal. Phenomenal, like, film, um, but definitely a phenomenal first film. Um, it is so hard to make these things, and with the level of sophistication, how beautiful the, the film is, how um, secure it feels. Like, I felt like I was watching a very seasoned film by a seasoned filmmaker when I watched this movie. Um, unbelievable performance by the lead actor, Asante Black. I think he got talent, face, presence, he's got it all. Um, but the performances throughout were very, very strong. Luis Guzman is, is tremendous. So can you just tell us a little bit about the genesis of the project? What made you want to make this tell us story as your first story? Yeah. Um, well, first, thank y'all all for being here. Um, this is my life stream. So to share it with y'all is a blessing. So I appreciate y'all taking the time to come and spend your Saturday afternoon with us. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I wanted to make something. Helma Shoemaker said, your first film should be something you know really well because you are guaranteed to get lost in the process. It's just part of the initiation of making your first film. So with the combination of Sundance giving me a five week deadline to write my first script ever, and um, uh, you know, and in any art I, I make, you know, I want it to be vulnerable. I want it to be personal. I want it to be a therapy for me. Um, so a combination of all those things just made sense to write something that I understood that was in my backyard. I know how it smells. I know how it tastes. So when I do have those moments of imposter syndrome or insecurities, I can always lean to the things that I know subconsciously. And, um, you know, I wasn't really trying to invent the wheel. I was trying to find a new way to look at the wheel. And that was, that was the start of it. Right, you definitely did that, and and look, New York never looks so beautiful. It makes me want to move back, actually. <laughs> so it brings me to my next kind of question about your team and, and Eric. What what a tremendous uh, job you did with the Senate Prior and Governor. I was like, look, I mean, yeah, we should be talking. I'm not going to steal the DPs after this. So, uh, fantastic, really fantastic work. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship? How did you guys come together? Have you made shorts before? What was your kind of evolution here? Sure. Um, so yeah, I saw a film uh, called Clemency in New York City, uh, shot in light lens by Eric. And there was just something really sophisticated and dialed in. And I, obviously I love the Tarantinos and the Scorseses, but I'm a massive lover of older filmmakers like Fellini and Kurosawa and Ozu and Kubrick. And just grammar is so intentional in those films. Um, you know, so when I saw Eric's work for the first time, there was such a layer of sophistication that I just hadn't seen in a while, especially highlighting black and brown faces. And I was immediately enamored by his work and then pleasantly surprised that I think we were already friends on Facebook and I cold messaged him and he actually responded. And then um, in 2020, when I was at the Sundance Labs, Eric was there with a film called 40 Year Old Version. Um, which is another beautiful film shot, shot on film, black and white in New York City. Um, and we met and we connected and I, you know, he's from the Bronx, cares about movies, cares about film. And I think for me, like, um, you know, you, you want to put a team around you that protects you. And, and they did that very well. And I knew that like visuals is my comfort zone. I can make things look pretty. But I wanted to create an emotional story and I wanted to be intentional and that just felt like Eric's backbone. So I felt like our combination of aesthetic would be able to create something really unique for this story. And Eric, can you talk a little bit about, uh, can you expand on that? 
Yeah, I mean, I, uh, Aristotle, Aristotle hit me up, and we really met at some random party at Sundance, um, and hung out and talked about the movie a little bit, and then, like, like, like later in the week, I think mean, he came to later and talked about it more. Um, and, you know, I think just for me, the script was amazing. Um, you know, it's really rare for me as a cinematographer to get to shoot something about where I'm from, and even more rare to, get to have that thing be written and directed by somebody also from that place. Um, it felt real, really authentic. I knew, you know, the Bronx gets a bad rap. It has for a long time, and I knew it wasn't going to in this film, um, and I wanted to be part of that story. Um, as far as, you know, I, uh, I'm always looking for a challenge, and this, you know, this movie was definitely a challenge, you know, it, creatively. Um, you know, we definitely got together, ourselves challenged me in terms of aesthetics, in terms of grammar, we really hammered that out. Um, and we didn't win here every day with a plan, and hopefully that's good to work. I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about how you came to work with your producer. Um, indie films are hard anywhere. Uh, definitely in New York, definitely on a budget, but you guys, you elevated it. So can you talk a little bit about your relationship? How you came to yeah, so I met Lizzie through uh, a, a friend of ours, and you know, Lizzie was coming off the Sugar Baby, which was just like one of my most favorite films that I had seen in a really long time. And when when I learned what that budget was and what it felt and what it looked like, I was like, oh man, like she's really amazing at her job. And then um, she read the script and we met at Soul House and I mean, we talked for like two or three hours. And it was, you know, I've had so many producers on this movie, but it was rare that somebody actually sat with me and just went, what's your intention? Like, everyone's like, I gotta give you ideas. I gotta tell you ways to make it better. But Lizzie was really the first person that was like, what are you trying to say with this film? And even that exercise was very comforting. And I don't think I could have, like, even if this was my fifth film, I don't think I could have had a better team. Like, regardless of first film, I was protected every day by production and department heads. And, you know, this is my first movie, but I've made 70 commercials, music videos, I've been on set for 20 years. It's really hard to get a group of talented people that are individually genius to make one thing. Even if you have a hundred million dollars, that's really difficult. And even though, you know, we only had 20 days for principal and we, you know, did seven, nine pages a day, we were all making the same movie. Um, and Lizzie really helped me create a dynamic for us to work like that. Um, so it was, it was really cool. Now, Lizzie, tell us what really happened. Um, an epic meeting at the Soho House. Um, but no, I mean, I was really touched by the script. Um, there were a lot of things that really drew me in. And when I met Aristotle, it was just so clear how much vision he had. And it honestly felt like he was going to make the movie, whether I did it or not, which is like great energy to bring to a producer because you're like, oh, I've got a real like partner in this thing. Um, and I don't know, it felt very natural. Like from the first time we spoke, it felt like we had known each other a long time, uh, which is so helpful, especially because uh, the point at which I came in was a bit later in the process than I usually do. So I usually would have had like a year or more in time to just like build rapport with the director. And we really had like a few months before we went into production to build that rapport. Um, and it's just been like an incredibly uh, fruitful and like valuable and rewarding collaboration. Um, I want to talk about the performances. Um, you know, I, there's the cinematographer is working with your director, but like, how did you work with Asante? Like, what did you see him? What did you find him? What was your relationship? How did that work? Yeah, Asante, um, well, Guzman, not to skip ahead, but Guzman was attached first. Um, and it, it was Eric, Guzman, and myself. We were like the trifecta that went out initially. And um, yeah, Asante, you know, this role was tricky, you know, because unfortunately there's not a large pool of young black talent that can carry a film like this. This movie is from Kadir's perspective. We only break it in the midpoint sequence. So I needed an 18 or 22 year old to come and be a professional every day on set, which is just, it's a lot to ask for of, of, of a young adult. And thankfully he was that and then some. I mean, so much, him and Alex have so much poise. Like they are old souls. I mean, when they're not working, they're reading. 
and they're building a relationship with Crafty and like they're just really good kids and um you know I I I auditioned Asante and immediately without even saying a line from the film I knew he was the guy just based on his intellect his understanding of the material and I knew he would challenge me you know because we all we want to be challenged we want to make sure we're on our A game and between him and Guzman there was really never an opportunity to not be on your A game because they're so talented. I mean, I want to talk a little bit about the score. Um, I, I feel like you did so many things so well in subverting so many stereotypes that make it this film. I think you've done a tremendous job with that storytelling. And even with, and that goes into the music and the music choices and the design of the film and the cinematography. All of that feels very layered, very purposeful, um, very conscious. Um, you know, I, I hate to bring up other films, but it was Moonlight esque. And uh, I mean that and as a compliment in, in terms of its beauty, sheer beauty of the film. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and what were some of the things, decisions that you made about that? No, I really appreciate that. I mean, Moonlight was the movie that convinced me I could make a movie. So that means the world to me. Um, and yeah, I think, um, you know, like I was saying, I think we've been trained that when you shoot black and brown faces, it, it's, it's usually spray and pray. You know, it's if it's not like the guys like us, like really challenging, they'll shoot a wide, two over the shoulders, two close ups, and like we'll figure it out later. And I think a combination of the intention that Eric and I had, mixed with really not the luxury of time, of being able to explore and discover, it's like if you don't get the scene in 30 minutes, you don't get the scene. Um, so, you know, when you're seeing that Dolly Moon, that's the only shot we have of that, you know, and it was risky. But I think when you do have that sort of intention, a filmmaker like you will notice those nuances um, because you, you have to make those things work. Um, and I just, you know, like I said, I'm inspired by the Kurosawa's of the world who combine shots and evolve shots without the camera even necessarily needing to move in those things. And I just thought it would be really exciting to um, shoot what people are gonna uh, automatically assume is just another like hip hop movie and completely throw them for a loop. Uh, I wanna open it up for audience questions if anybody has any. Okay. Hey, well, um, I, I know you didn't have much time, but uh, being able to kind of uh, dictate between movies and I think schemes, uh, their, their performances, so they could be like, hey, be real lean in this take, or be real nice in this take, or was it always just like, I need you to be like, nice in this take? Yeah, no, thank you for that question. Um, I mean, we figured out a lot of stuff before we shot um, about uh, intention and the motivation for the character saying those lines. But one thing that my actors and I did establish was a theme called the take for love that I got from Robert Townsend, where it's like before we start a scene, I would go to Louie and be like, yo, you need to take for love on this one. And if he said he did, I would manage in my mind the time to make sure to have that at the end so he could play. And thankfully, thankfully to me, with this level of acting that I had, we used a lot of those takes for love. Um, you know, so I think, you know, directing is like never putting your ego in front of the, the film. I never wanted to make the movie I saw in my head. And I think in order to do that, you you um, you create a safe space for artists to want to play, um, and that's that's how we did it. Thank y'all for coming and just sharing the film. I know it took it probably a shit ton of work, so I know I'm just yeah, happy for y'all. But I'm just curious between you and uh, Eric, how y'all like settled on like the palette? I think because New York is a place that is like has such like a long like cinematic history like how are you all coming into this and being like we want our Bronx to look like this and I saw I mean I definitely saw it I'm curious how y'all like built that together yeah well you know um it all starts from my purpose so we're seeing this world through an artist's eyes so that already told me that I had some room to play that thematically made sense um and I'm just a big advocate of the movie evolving with the character's art. So you'll notice like at the beginning, it's much more saturated colors, it's more primary colors, it's more shallow depth of feel. 
Um, I'll let Eric talk about like some of the framing ideas that he brought to the table, but just in terms of palette, you know, we wanted to create a world that was very enticing at the beginning because Kadir's getting enticed and getting pulled in. And then as he finds solace with Luis and really starts building this family, those colors get desaturated because the stakes, the violence isn't there as it once was. So Eric and I were just really intentional in, in, in aspect ratio and framing and color making sure that all those things that were thematically dialed in with our characters and that they evolved with the character's art. And it's like, once you think like that, the, uh, it feels obvious. You know, there's not a ton of options. Um, and that's how we did it. But I'll, I'll let Eric talk a little bit about framing. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as like palette and kind of how, how it was shot that way, I mean, it's just where I'm from and what I know when I walk around the camera, that's what I'm shooting. Uh, so, it's just what I think the brush should look like, um, and I, you know, and, and I, personally, I don't take how other people shot it necessarily into account. Um, but uh, you know, as far as framing goes, we set it on four by three for for really two reasons. One, like to move back our feet, so we really wanted the ability, we wanted the verticality of the frame to be able to have people like down looking up at a piece. We wanted that, like that wall, the main piece, uh, you know, with his brother to be like. This kind of like mess, like take up the frame and then have you know characters down at the bottom, um, and then you know also the four by three is really a movie about about Kadir finding his place and and feeling like he doesn't fit anywhere. So if you notice like the um, the in OTL the first time you're OTL all of Kadir's shots he's the only one in the frame or it's him or it's him and Mo um, and then everybody else is shot for the most part is a two shot. But really we're trying the four by three helps us isolate him, right? Like this is widescreen movie, you would see everybody that's on the couch with him. But the four by three really sucks it down just into his world, which uh, you know we felt was an important, you know, a, a great way to kind of, you know, silently make you feel the way we want you to feel. Um, great film. Thank you so much for doing it. Um, like there's so many takeaways and so many themes um, from like family dynamics and grief and, and art and all of that. So my question is, um, what is your message? Is there one solidifying message? Like what was your message that you were intending? I don't know if there was one, but I think there was. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, you know, I always start with like really simple questions. So I say to myself, like, how can I challenge the audience to look at themselves and the world around them? So I think about, all right, in the last five minutes, how do I really want you to feel? And I really wanted the audience to feel hopeful. Um, you know, so that's that's the takeaway feeling I, I want you to have, regardless of knowing whether Kadir gets in a pride or not, because that's not really my responsibility. When, once we leave Kadir, we know he's okay. Um, and then, you know, I think it's just perspective, you know, perspective of family, the one you're going into versus the one you choose and what that is. Like, I'm an orphan, so like I chose my family um, and I've rarely seen that be depicted on the screen. You know, what's the right way to be an artist? I have friends who only shoot one style of photography and they're very well known for that. And then I have other friends who wake up and they try pottery and then the next day they're doing glass blowing. And, and I've just never seen that conversation depicted on the screen. And I hope that now when you see graffiti, uh, you know, maybe your initial instinct isn't that's just crime or vandalism, but a very pure form of expression. These artists risk their freedom and their lives to express themselves. And I think there's a lot of beauty and integrity in that. And, you know, if you see a homeless person sleeping, your instinct isn't this person's a, a fuck up, you know? I think about what if you make all the right choices and you still end up homeless? So I hope that the audience takes, those are the important themes that I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, well, we made the short in 2018, 
Um, and then Sundance founded in 2019 and then COVID happened. So it was quick, but over the span of five years from start to finish. Um, and I mean, movies are miracles. They, they really are. Um, I don't know if I can even say a movie's bad anymore. I'm just gonna say it's not for me. Cause they're just so hard to make. And every day is a challenge, you know? Um, and, but when you have a team of people who are smarter than you, then you know you have people who have foresight and they're helping you navigate those challenges. And I just had a good support system, you know, the people on this panel, and even Ray, who's my mentor, um, you know, talk for hours, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, I can do this, I'm insecure, I have imposter syndrome, and you just have beautiful people around you who help you stay on course, and you kind of really need it to do something like this, because it is such a tumultuous experience, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, 20 day any movie, things are happening all at once. Uh, we were like losing and refinding locations as we were going. Um, we had to swap out our costume designer two days before shooting. So the first week, Aristotle and I went to set three hours early every day to pick all the costumes. Uh, I don't know, the list goes up. We had, you know, just there's different personalities on the movie that are more difficult than others. But I think that like we just worked really hard to stay centered in our intention with the film and just we knew the things that were really important going in so when you can just like keep that at the core of everything you're doing everything else kind of just becomes noise and you sort of like laser vision through the rest of it um, i just want to be for this i mean like you said every film is a miracle and, and this is a beautiful miracle you guys did a tremendous job um what's one thing that you kind of learned about yourself in the process, or you, you, you can say that you were proud of yourself in the process of doing this? Just that I could make movies, and I didn't think I could before I did this. Um, and I think that I'll probably spend the rest of my career chasing the feeling we had on this set. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming to